So Javier Shergill is national spokesman for uh, the governing party in India, the BJP. That's the party, of course, of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Thanks very much for taking time here at the Munich Security Conference, uh, Javier Shergill. Let's talk about, first of all, the news that has really been shaking the event here today, uh, the death uh, of Alexei Navalny, the, the Russian opposition leader. Um, India has maintained good relations with Russia for decades and also through uh, the war over the last couple of years. When something like this happens, what goes through your mind and what goes through the kind of calculations in Delhi? Is this really a country, Russia, that you want to be doing business with? Uh, Russia, I will reiterate India's stand. Russia was, is and will remain India's strong friend and ally. As a nation, Russia has supported India and India in turn has supported Russia. Uh, the India has also been very clear, vocal in the G20 declaration and before that at every summit. India is on the side of the peace. India does not support any form of violence. India does not support any form of terrorism. When you talk about any particular incident, uh, changing equations in New Delhi, New Delhi believes in a resolution on any form of dispute and upholding the rule of law. So you say it doesn't really, like Russia could do anything and Russia would remain a, a friend for India? No, I, I, I'm going to reiterate. India foreign policy is very specific. Strategic autonomy and non-alignment. India is on the side of peace. India is not on the side of war. So if any party is on the side of war, any party is on perpetual violence, India does not stand. But as far as Russia and Ukraine are concerned, the G20 declaration, which had unanimity amongst all the member nations, is said that Russia and Ukraine should come to a unanimous solution. Yeah, so, I mean, Narendra Modi said a famous thing about the war. He said that this is not an era of war. And yet, that seems to contradict the fact that, you know, this war is still raging, you know, a year and a half after he said that. There's also war in the Middle East. Like, what did he mean by that statement? What, what did actually Narendra Modi mean? I think the Prime Minister's intent uh, by policy and action is very clear. Uh, look, it is beyond India's control if any particular situation is still existing. Point one. Point two, what Narendra Modi ji went was, violence is not a solution. Today, our G20 theme was one earth, one family and one future. Today is the era, the decade of capitalizing on innovation, capitalizing on progress, fighting climate change and not to pick up guns and point it towards each other. So that's what Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, meant. But that message does not seem to be getting through to Vladimir Putin, right? I mean, the war is continuing. I think the, the larger message of peace needs to get across uh, around the world and we India seriously hopes the Russia Ukraine crisis or any crisis anywhere in the world is uh, expeditiously solved now right now uh, at this conference there's a lot of talk about the fact that Germany and France have alongside the UK kind of committed uh, to new security agreements with Ukraine so pro promising to provide more weapons in the long term to Ukraine do you think that that is stoking the war? Do you feel that it would be better for them not to be providing those weapons? Look, India is uh, not in the habit of uh, handing out certificates on a particular policy stand of EU. The issue is EU and any other nation uh, needs to ask a specific question and a simple question. What would it take to stop the war? Would it take the pressure to bring both sides on the table? Or would it help to supply more guns? That's the question EU or any nation taking any particular side in this particular crisis needs to ask themselves. Many countries in the global south do claim that that is kind of pouring fuel on the fire. What's your thought? No, uh, India's stand is very specific. I think India, uh, the solution is not to uh, throw uh, fuel in the fire. Solution is to ensure both sides come on the table to discuss whether it means any form of pressure, whether it means persuasion, whether it means humanitarian efforts, whether it means uh, to use soft diplomacy. So we should focus on that. And is India doing anything towards Russia? Is Narendra Modi putting any pressure on Vladimir Putin to, to take those sort of steps, those diplomatic steps? The Prime Minister has been uh, very vocal during the crisis. Um, Prime Minister has appealed uh, for peace from both sides. On one hand, if we are talking to Russia, on the other hand, we are all equally providing humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. India has supplied more than 10,000 kgs of material to Ukraine for humanitarian aid. India is the reason that we have friends on both sides, that Indian citizens could be safely evacuated, the students, during the crisis. And I think Prime Minister uh, Modi's appeal that this is not the era of war will be heard by all sides and the world will be a better place tomorrow.
And do you think at some point, you know, in the future, India might uh, play some role in trying to find a negotiated solution? As you said, you know, it does maintain good relations with both sides. I Absolutely. I think the India's strength, it's its foreign policy of strategic autonomy and non-alignment. India is, can and has act as the perfect bridge. India can act as a catalyst to bring both sides on the table. And definitely India has a potential. India never interferes in any country's internal affairs. Neither India allows any country to uh, interfere in India's affairs. But if tomorrow both the sides seek India's help, India will, is always there to help. So can we expect some initiative this year from India on that front? Uh, I cannot give a prediction, but India will take whatever it takes to maintain peace in the global order. Now, India's profile has been rising further and further, of course, with, with the stature of its economy, um, its diplomatic clout. It made a very credible claim last year to be the global, uh, to the to be the leader of the global south at the G20 summit. What does India want to do with that kind of leadership? I think India's uh, policy is very simple. India does not believe in a concentration of power. India believes in a shared power and a progress for the entire region. India is also aware that uh, we have a very strong policy of neighborhood first. India, if it worked for Africa inclusion in G20, India is working overtime to be a net security provider in the Indo-Pacific for our island nations. India wants to work with bigger powers like the United States or by signing the IPF, the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, so that the supply chain disruption is stopped, our vulnerabilities are addressed. So the position India wants to be, India doesn't want to be a camp follower. India has become an agenda setter, and that's what we are working towards. Now, India is is under quite a bit of pressure in Asia from China. You know, on the border, um, you know, the long, very dis the, the very long disputed border. China has been moving into India's backyard. You know, with big relationships with Sri Lanka, with Pakistan, with the Maldives, um, with Bangladesh, um, and yet this doesn't get talked about very much at events like this in Europe. Do you feel that you're really getting the, uh, you know, the kind of attention from the outside world that those issues deserve? India does not crave uh, for attention. Neither India needs attention. India is fully capable to solve their own issues. India has the strength, the capability, the vision, the resolve, the willpower. India doesn't crave for attention from anywhere in the world. India is everybody's friend. The second point being, yes, China being China is a reality. But equal reality, India is a rising power. Despite the pandemic, Today, China's growth by S&P global ratings is pegged at 4.6% by 2026, whereas India's growth is pegged at 7%. India has a strong middle class of 460 million people. India has the fastest growing economy in the world. And today, the entire world, the West or the East, is coming to India to set up factories. The, the point I'm making is, despite all the uh, mischievous activities at the border, or attempts of intrusion on the border, India remains strong and India knows how to fully capable uh, to deal with the dragon. And why do you think the dragon, as you put it, is behaving like that on the border? Why is China being so aggressive out there? You know, the beauty about China is that nobody can ever uh, judge China's ambiguity. Nobody can answer why is China doing uh, anything for a particular reason. Nobody can answer why does China defy the global uh, the arbitration award in the South China Sea. Nobody knows why, why China um, is, uh, has uh, on the Indian establishment in Pakistan, the POK. Nobody knows why China is uh, having many nations in a debt trap. So what China does or does, it's a complete ambiguity. And I think the time will come, China will have to rethink their own global strategy. And do you think China is trying to dominate Asia? I, I think the era of uh, one single power domination is long gone. Uh, the, uh, the alliances, whether it's Quad, whether it's IPAF, whether it is Indian Middle Eastern European corridor, whether it's the East corridor connectivity, whether it's the Quad, has proved that no single party can dominate anything. This is the era of shared power, of uh, progress together, and I said, to progress the entire region as a whole. Now, there are elections coming up in India. Um, you actually switched sides from the opposition Congress to the BJP yeah. uh, not long ago. Um, uh, the, B, the opposition alliance is looking very weak, extremely fragmented going into this election. Are you worried that India doesn't have a strong enough opposition, that it's not good for democracy to have such a weak opposition? No, I'd say uh, sitting, standing in Germany, I would not indulge in opposition bashing or uh, that's our internal domestic politics. But all I can say is Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be sworn as the Prime Minister for the third time. 
and he will unfurl the national flag on 15th August 2024 from the Red Fort. Uh, number three, India's democracy is very robust, responsive and resilient. Uh, and as far as the opposition and government relationship is uh, based, it is based on a relationship of questioning, dissent, dialogue and debate. And that is why we have the most healthy democracy in the world. Just a very quick question. I would like to finally just get your response to the decision of the Supreme Court to strike down um, the electoral bond system of financing, which your party has certainly benefited from in recent years. This was deemed to be totally untransparent. What's your response to that? I think the, the being a lawyer myself in the Supreme Court of India, the objective of bil, bi, uh, bringing in the electoral bond scheme was to deal and counter with uh, the money laundering aspects to counter the cash component, to counter the black money and have a channelized system through a banking channel. But if the Supreme Court believes that the uh, revelation of the donors is more important than tackling the cash and the black money component, then the government of India totally respects the decision. Javish we'll have to wrap it up there. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.